Somebody's been sitting in my chair, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Om. Namaste. Welcome everyone to Satsang here in Mantisaja today. Um, <clears throat> I'm aware so quite a number of people have come yesterday, or it was yesterday, no? And uh, so welcome to you. Uh, some people for the first time. And some few have been before, so welcome for everyone. And uh, uh, hope your time in Mantisaja will be uh, most powerful time. But this will be depending on what your purpose is for coming. You know? Your purpose is for coming. If it is really to go as far as you can, to uh, wake up to the fullness of what is true about you, and then I feel good about it, then full welcome for that. And I see no reason why you should not. I am still waiting for somebody to give me just reason why you should not wake up. First of all, to know what waking up means. Also. What it means, wake up, because this term, so many people they have heard, awakening, moksha, liberation, self-realization, all these words, and what do they mean? And perhaps, are they meaning different things for different people? I don't know, but what I mean is to come to, uh, to come out of the hypnosis of personhood. Which, although it is also a form of consciousness, is very. It is the most limited and restricted expression of consciousness. What we call a person, and yet uh, nearly all the beings are, are so much in a state of wanting to defend and to protect false identity. So those who don't want to, at least, have come to recognize that there is a false identity, and that the sense of being a person is indeed a very limited and unstable expression of consciousness, and have a sense that you can come out of it, and that many people are already experiencing that it is true, it is possible to, 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 to transcend the lower expressions of self-projection, and are waking up to a deeper understanding. How far can it go? Well, I feel that anyone who come here to Mantisaja, or to come to myself, I don't see a reason why I should refer you to somewhere else. If you have come, and if it is your time, and what will mean if it is your time? Some people they have an idea. It is my time. I'm ready. Come, give it to me or something. And I've found that no, I don't know. I don't know you. I don't know what you're talking about. Some people come and they feel I don't know if it's really. And poof, they come to, at least come to the, the, what I would say, the doubtless state, because not by believing something, but by somehow having some confirmation of experience that is so powerful that they cannot deny that it exists you see still some of these beings they go back to the mind also not fully not fully but they may still find that there is still some romance with the old conditioning there may still be some you know old desires that uh, we are holding on to, and to that extent you will not come to the, full, the fullness of your um, awakening. So, as you see, as I am talking, there are certain things that can create a delay in your seeing, and much of it is to do with fear. The fear is to do with ignorance. 
ignorance perpetuate because of arrogance. So somewhere in there, I don't know where you will place your own self-assessment. We will see. Maybe it doesn't matter, actually. So I am here also not to teach, 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 teach. I am also wanting to discover who come here and say, Yes, uh, I am here for this. Actually, it can go more than where their mouth say. So, welcome to Satsang. Yeah. Okay, you can come. Um, I've got the arrogance. And I feel like <clears throat> this is the final furlong. It's like this is this is this is the last bit that needs to go because since I've been here, I've just been wrapped in your grace and 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 seen the love that's been around you. And but I still, even just before coming in, I still get irritated sometimes with people being around you because of that. <laughs> I don't know. Just, I don't know. I was thinking about it and I was trying to work it out. Why am I still feeling this way? I, yesterday I was feeling so much grace and I'm so grateful to be here. But sometimes this, 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 this thing, these feelings happens and I'm, not, and I'm putting it back to, maybe I've dropped all um, attachments, but... <laughs> I haven't dropped you, you, your t attachment to you. <sighs> so there's two kinds of attachment. You attach if you attach to me personally, or you attach to me impersonally. If you attach to me personally, I'm going to give you a lot of trouble. <laughs> yes. <laughs> If you are attached to me impersonally, you are going to be just fine, <laughs> isn't it? Like this, and uh, it is uh, difficult no? because, um, especially with people that you know, isn't it? Because believe it or not, um, we do have projections and uh, expectations. And we do have sometimes what you may call, um, um, you know, you've heard me say, many of you, that uh, I say this mostly to my intimate students, the ones who I feel uh, somehow that they can bear my words. I say, live as though you have no rights. Now, in the world, if you say this, it will not go down well. You see? Everybody, I stand up for my rights, fight for your rights, and all. I say, the one who is wise, you know, I say, live as though you have no rights and no entitlements. Then what will happen? Everything that comes to you, you appreciate. You don't think that you, you know, they just belong to me, yes, you know. No, nothing belongs to you. Not even you. Not even you, meaning not even your idea you have of yourself. Not even that is true. You see? When you live like this, you know, like I have no rights and so on, then something immediately, uh, some humility comes into your expression. And humility is beautiful because it opens the way for grace to come. Because you won't come if you are arrogant, grace will not come to you. If you think you are special, she will not come to you. So uh, sometimes things like this can happen. That you know, uh, I'm talking to my sister at the moment, and she's coming like that. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. I understand because somehow you know. The, the 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 mind will take that shape and say, look, you know, oh, you know, 
Um, he is, look, look how they are crowding him all the time and give him a break and so on. The mind is pretending to be compassionate. <laughs> but he's not compassionate. That is not his purpose for doing that. No, his purpose is to make you feel vexed and yeah. And to believe him, you must not believe him. I am not complaining. You see? So, uh, when somebody asks one saint, What do you want? And he answered, Whatever God gives, bitter or sweet. Because he has already prepared my mind that whatever flavor comes, I will make use of it. The power of discernment will make use of it. So when you say that you feel sometimes this arrogance coming, it's not yours, you see. The mind has tricked you for a long time to make you feel you have right. You have a right to be angry. You have a right to be like this. And uh, you see, who is it speaking to also? He is speaking to the idea you have of who you are. Because he cannot speak to your true self, but you don't know that yet. So we are vulnerable to this voice, you know. We have to transcend this voice and its influence. And then somehow you come away from its hold, you see. It's still the play of Maya. Recently I have been I have been sharing with you one of Saint Kabir's songs. Mm, what does he say? Maya, Maya, you are the great deceiver, Maya. Everyone you have trapped inside your net, and nobody recognizes you. But I know you. Saint Kabir say like that, I know you. You must know Maya. Sometimes what Maya has spoken inside our ears, we have accepted too easily. And now we are protecting her voice inside, but she is deceiving. And how can she deceive you? Because we don't as yet recognize who you are. When you realize who you are in the truth, not just as an idea, not with an intellectual conviction, but with direct experience, she will lose this influence over you. For this reason you came to satsang. You see? Where does Maya come from? I want to tell you something that might surprise you. Maya comes from God also. And grace comes from God. Everything comes from God. All this is God's play. Where you come from, you are also from God. <laughs> but you are not Maya. You see, you have to recognize we put on this human suit to to play and to experience. What I say sometimes is like consciousness, another name for God you can say, hmm, creates the sense of a problem or a challenge in order to have the experience of transcending it. We have now the challenge to transcend all our conditioning but not to be cynical about it, and not to curse anybody, but just to see it and to feel and to say, No, but that is not true. So what help do you have to do that? Because all the beings, we have all received conditioning. In the same way that all the, all the beings living in the ocean are wet, all the beings who entered in manifestation, we are condition, conditioned, you see. This body we need in order to, to have experience. This is an experienced body. Hmm? But the body is also experienced. We are not so only attached to the body, but to the life inside it. So something in this we have to overcome, we have to learn. And it's time for us. Why you have come here? There are seven and a half billion human beings alive currently on this planet. Uh, we are a little speck of them. Why you came here, you see? 
What selected you to come here and put another one another place? We can never understand the ways of the Supreme. But you are here, and you are here for something. And because you have chosen truth, most of you, then all the, all the delusions are going to come for you. The devil is going to come for you, because him you must overcome. And he doesn't exist only on this side of the eyes. He lives also behind the eyes also. But you have an advantage. Because you are already the self. You see? Just you're not aware of it yet. Hmm? Just like uh, someone can trick uh, a naive person, but somebody who is more clever, they cannot trick them. You have to be wise to overcome Maya's tricks. Satsang is the place that is helping you. Is reminding you who you are. When you forget yourself, Maya is strong. When you remember yourself, Maya does not exist. You came here now, and you're feeling all whatever, whatever is has been undetected. The blind spots that has been existing in you, you're not aware of. They are coming to the surface. Is bad or good? It's good. Doesn't feel good, but it is good for the one who knows. Because you are, your beingness now is becoming is detoxing. Okay? So all this is coming up. It wants to burp out what is not harmonious. Sometimes it feels like you are going to vomit out. Nobody enjoys vomiting. We don't enjoy when we know it's going to happen. We don't enjoy it even when it's happening, but we enjoy very much when it's gone. You see? So sometimes these things coming up. And we have to see with each other, we have to tolerate that sometimes, oh, something very heavy today. And then somebody points out, ah, Maya is in your pocket. <laughs> ah, I know it, I know it. It's going. But sometimes it's they're so strong, yeah. and you go back to your way of how you act, how you react, you know, to, towards people or whatever. If you're feeling irritated, you might snap at them, and you go back into the same kind of behavior, and so it spills onto somebody else. Do you know that, what I mean? Yes, that is still you the dream. Can't help you. you yes, you know. yes. Your your self image does that. The idea you have of yourself is behaving. It is the one that's acting and reacting and interacting. There's a deeper place, a knowing, which is not touched. Everyone must come to this place. You see? If you don't touch this place, then you always believe it is you. Uh, why am I like this? And sometimes I don't want to do this, and this is happening, and so on. And so in satsang, I will guide you like that. Say, yes, yes. The one who you are speaking as right now, Hmm? This one you're speaking as, uh, can you re- can it is how real is it? Yeah? Identify it. You know? He said, but how can I? it's just me? It's me. I said, no, this is just habit. Who is speaking this thing? Yes, maybe habit is speaking. Maybe habit, identity habit. How many different personalities have you put on over the years? Hmm? How many different things you have called yourself, and you have outgrown them. You outgrown so many ways of behaving, and so many. Just like you, you change fashion and you do different. You're outgrowing so many different ways that you used to say, "This is me," and so on. And now you, you're embarrassed by them. You will not even want to show any pictures of yourself in those days. You see. In the same way, we are outgrowing certain modes of behavior, certain views we had. Certain things we used to think and believe, now they are no more. They are, they are in the back now. We are outgrowing everything. So presently you say, Yeah, but these reactions, and I'm, I find myself reacting. And so, what is the trouble? Identity. It's identity 
that makes us feel so bad about ourselves, sometimes so good about ourselves even, identities, as you see. And uh, everyone is protecting identity. But identity is the one thing you must transcend. Identity gets you into a lot of trouble. The person you think you are, you, an action and reaction happen. It it just kind of happens, you know, uh, to a consciousness that has been under some state of you may say conditioning. Conditioned behavior is unfolding, and we put this tag, it's a self, onto it. I know it's not easy to convey. You know, even when I find things not easy to convey. Is because it's not easy for you to hear them also. When more open you are to it, then the words will flow like water being poured into water. But when you don't understand, it's very difficult for the words to flow. You see? So at the moment, these things are coming up to, to be burped out, to come out. If you have a little earthquake in the bottom of the ocean, lot of bubbles will come to the top. And when they reach the top, they pop and they vanish. These bubbles of all ideas and behaviours and so on, they are coming up, because satsang, the grace of satsang. You see, before they used to hide in you, they found lots of places to hide in you. But now a light of grace has come and they can't hide. It's like thieves hiding in a glass house. Under the bed, but it's a glass bed. Under the carpet, glass carpet, nothing, they can't hide. So now they're coming to the surface and it doesn't feel comfortable. Why it doesn't feel comfortable? Because identity is there. You think it is you. So then shame comes, blame comes, arrogance comes, defensiveness comes, accusation comes. But if you see that, wait, it's a purification, your purification, you see. Something is being healed. If somebody attack you on the street, and they yeah, and they cut you with a knife, or take your money, you run away, and you go to the hospital, and the doctor also cut you. <laughs> but him, you thank you, thank you, thank you. The intention is different. You see, suppose you smack the doctor. Why you do that? You know. So, but I have to put it together, otherwise you are going to bleed to death. Say, don't do that again. Then you are you are don't you're not aware of when things are painful and they are good. This is a pain that's good. When things come up and you see, but you must watch with some detachment. If you watch with identity, you your eyes will not be clear. So in satsang you are told. Observe all these things, but don't identify. Stay detached, and then you, you, you can keep out of it. But if you identify, then you want to interfere, you want to push things about. This is a challenge. You see? I see these things coming up for you, but I know quietly they are good. No? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell her they are so good, because I don't want her to be too comfortable about it. Because you also want to have to get rid of them also. But it's not a bad thing. Just we don't defend. And watch the identity, because the identity wants to protect. He is protecting the enemy. Later you come to see you have no enemy. When everything becomes your friend, you will have no enemy. He said, wise person, the wise man, makes a house out of the stones that his enemies throw at him. Builds a house and lives happily in the house. <laughs> Maybe on one place you see one of the stones that have got blood on it also. He said, I like to put this one to remember, this was a very important stone for me. That stone woke me up. I put it over the front door, so I remember, yes, this one. You see? There is no one. It is impossible to wake up without some struggle and some suffering. It is impossible. You see? 
So you are experiencing some of the birth pains, you see? Birth pains. The, 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 the contractions have started, you see? Meaning all the things that were suppressing your spontaneity, you know, little ideas, little behavior, little old stale behavior, they are coming up, they are burping out. And then arrogance says, but I thought I had dealt with them long ago. I'm sorry. They are still coming out. Then something said, but I thought I, I surpassed that five years ago. Why is it coming? So therefore I say, uh, uh, don't form any hurried or premature conclusions about anything you experience. Just watch and just notice that it's just traffic, it's just clouds passing, it's just waves passing. Don't identify with them. If you identify with them, you behave like a wave also. You don't identify with them, you are just you are not touched by them. You will learn, but you will not be swept away. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. I want you to pay attention also, everybody, to as we are here. Because this is not merely exchange of concepts. Grace has called this satsang together, and she wants to reveal herself in you. You are going to experience this. Hmm? So don't be too much in questions, questions, questions. Hmm? It's okay if something is really there, but don't use a question to kind of show yourself. Just uh, more follow where the words are taking you. I'm not teaching so much. The emphasis is not so much on teaching, mostly maybe reminding, sometimes reminding, but very often emptying, sometimes transmitting. I'm not doing anything intentionally. I don't say, today I must transmit nothing. I'm just here. I even thought, why I call satsang on such a hot day? You know? Also, I had some did something wrong that I shouldn't have done, I ate some gluten bread. <laughs> so I feel particularly a bit tired. You know, like this. Of course, it doesn't really matter on some other level. I've done it many times. You know? <laughs> oh, my doctor doesn't hear this. They watch satsang also. Um, so uh, it's a good example also, because then sometimes some feelings come, and say, oh, it's OK, it's not. And this ignoring, sometimes we are told, Oh, no, but you should really pay attention to this and that. You should know when you should pay attention and when you should not. You should know when you pay attention and when you can ignore some things. We pay far too much attention to things which are nonsense things. Gluten. <laughs> ah, OK. It's sometime a nonsense thing. So you will come? Hmm. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you. Hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm leaving soon, I'm leaving tomorrow. Um, and it's been uh, so many things came up during this day, exactly what you were referring to. And I am very so grateful that I was here to be able to just feel the support of the energy, energy field here and mm -hmm. just and um, I thought I thought that before leaving, originally I wanted to. I have one wish. The way it came, it first came in words. I wanted to leave at your feet everything that distracted me or troubled me. <clears throat> but I realize, actually, this is not what I truly want. Is not to is to leave at your feet the is to leave at your feet 
the, the one in me that can be troubled and distracted. Yes. You, you, you caught him. Don't just pray to be free from the circumstance, situations and stuff that to trouble you. Uh, then seek to be free from the one who is always being troubled. Because if you don't, and you try only to change situation, get rid of the trouble, you are you are for maybe all your life going to have trouble. And that, that trouble tree is going to keep producing more and more fruit. You have to top him at the root. How to do that now? How to do that? You say you want to leave it at your feet. What it mean? Uh, means if you really mean that, you leave it. Then you don't touch it. And then if he comes back and he's coming to you, you say, "Why are you coming back? I left you with Muji. <laughs> it's, uh, it's his trouble. I don't. I don't care about you." And you have to go about your way. But who can do that? You leave it at my feet, and then two o'clock in the morning, Guruji, can I have it back for a minute? I said, no. I'll be done with it then. Otherwise, we say things we don't mean them. Suppose you pray to God. You ask God, please help me to. Yeah, just I'm, I'm, I'm leaving all of this at your feet. What is the meaning of this prayer? If then, when these things come back, you are fighting. Uh, no, no. You say no, no. I've finished with it. I've offered it. There's a power in that. It means that I am not going to get again emotionally or psychologically involved with that. But he's still coming. And then wait a second. Then you say, well, I have to leave the one who is coming for also. I tell you what I mean. Actually, some years ago, I was in Tiruvannamalai. We were, we've been having a retreat for quite some time, or the season I think it was like has been going on uh, for some time. And I had the last week, but uh, I had a sore foot. It was caused by ingrown toenail on my big toe. And this, you know, the nail grow like this, no? And it's it actually caused a lot of pain. They went to the doctor, and then he says, "Oh, you must go to one hospital in Chennai to take the nail out. You must go to take the nail out." And then he says, "Then you have to, you know, it will, you know, after that, you you must keep quiet and look after the foot." You know, I said, "But I can't go right now because I have uh, another four or five satsangs to do." He said, No, you must go straight away because it is infected and it's getting black. My toe is getting black actually. But I didn't want to finish that song like that. I said, Just five days more before the end of season, mm, maybe I sacrificed the toe. <laughs> I didn't want to go like that. So then this week, I also on top of this, I was in the habit of going production, not totally. I was walking a bit around the mountain uh, to one, uh, one place I'd walk from where I am, from Ramanashram near, to one place, uh, Kanapa Temple. I'd go there in the morning. And then, so the toe is hurting, and then I go out. Then every time I stop, maybe to just sit down, sometimes some people meet me, I saw all flies around my foot. Because they know where to go, you know. They come, and they're there, and I'm trying to shake them off, and they still, they go off, they come back, like this. So the next day, I put a lot of tea tree oil on my foot. Tea tree oil is very strong, very strong smell. I'm told it flies that don't like it. Then I bandage the foot and everything. I go out. Then they start to come around my knee. They're looking. They know something is around here somehow. <laughs> and it took them maybe five minutes. They find it, and they still keep coming there. Next day I go out, I put on tea tree oil, bandage and socks. <laughs> they still come. They didn't stop coming until I went to the one hospital 
and they took the nail out. That was after I finished that song. Then I was fine. And uh, by grace, it was okay. It was finished. After this, no more flies. <laughs> you get my point? Yes. You have to. T- <laughs> you have to- yeah. It's not most elegant example, but it is true. And you have. What is it that keeps calling the flies? So he caught it, you see. What's the point, you see, of of bandage and tea tree oil, citronella oil, lavender oil, plaster, you know, furry socks. None of them is going to work. I have to either heal this toe or take him off. So ego is that toe. Or let's say the toenail. Ego is a toenail. <laughs> so, how then to take this one out? So, either I couldn't take it out myself, no? I went to see a doctor. What do you have to do? You say, Please help me, I want to leave this at your feet. At your feet. <laughs> then you have to really leave it. Or you follow the inquiry that I give, which is a very, very powerful thing. And everybody, including those who are of a devotional temperament, they can also do self inquiry also. It's very powerful. It takes you all the way. It takes you all the way. It takes you completely beyond the field of images. Hmm? Because even if you left this body and you went to heaven, heaven is also images for most people. There are only very few people for whom heaven is not an image. Because we are attached to the body, the bodies are attached to other bodies, trees and rivers and sky and so on. We are attached to them because you are attached to the body. This body wants bodily pleasure. Hmm? Then you get a heavenly body, you want heavenly pleasure. Who is the one who can go beyond all these forms? You can find them even while you have form. But you have to discover the formless which is inside the form. Which is the truth of you. When you do this, then I can say, let's see if we can go beyond heaven even. If you are attached to your body and images, you may say, Oh no, 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 no. Maybe can we go to where you want after heaven? No? Say, yeah, yeah, you 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 can go to heaven as well if you want. You can even enjoy the heaven here also if you want. But where does heaven come from? You can enjoy also here. You maybe have not heard that said. said. When you discover, you see, we are seeing and perceiving. Perceiving means um, phenomenally uh, thoughts, feelings, objects. People, the sense of otherness, the sense of your own self. Hmm? This is phenomenal seeing. This is the dynamic expression of consciousness. This is life, existence. That's what we all seem to love, existence, and we don't want it to end. Why we don't want it to end? Because we know it ends. <laughs> if you didn't, if it didn't end, you wouldn't need to know that when it. Why well, don't want it to end? So everything ends. Everything that has a beginning has an end. Everything has a form must change also. Is there something, is there anything that does not change? Is there something that does not die, does not perish? 
Wouldn't you want to know? Today? Also? <laughs> I don't want to know tomorrow. I want to know now. Hmm? You cannot just know it with your mind also. I, I have no ideas to sell. I am not a trader in concepts. Hmm? If you want to discover, then let's look together and you can see. And it is the most natural and the most simple also. Hmm? You think you have ever perceived anything that doesn't come from your mind? Everything we see uh, come and go. Everything. Life is showing is a profound metaphor all the time, a living metaphor. Hmm? Yesterday we had moments like this, where I can come and touch your body and feel, ah, oh, feel it's warm today. What temperature? Oh, today is you know 38 degrees. See, oh. and th- those were palpable, tangible moments. They felt actual and real, but that was yesterday. It's gone. I cannot dip back and take something from yesterday and present it today and say, "Look how it is." Yesterday, a sample from yesterday, everything is gone. So I'm not making this up. We are just putting to no. So many things, your feelings and thoughts and so on, they keep going. The way you feel, even if you say, you know, the thing I was looking at yesterday is still here, but uh, is that what life is? No, it's how you feel about it also. If you say, yes, I love, you know, I love, uh, you know, brownies, I love them, really all the time, yes. <laughs> I say, I bet you, I bet you don't love them all the time. Hmm? One time we came out here, it was almost like yesterday, full moon night. I think Omkara said to me, Oh, it's so beautiful, so beautiful. I wish it was always like this. I said, No, you don't. No. <laughs> you would not appreciate it like this. So, in the realm of change, let change happen. It's very natural. But here you must find that which does not change. Then you will understand what change is. Because you will know that which does not change. And when you find that which is not change to be not different from you, then fear will go. And death will go. Hmm. You see? So, our meeting to find that which does not change. And I am not talking about the idea of it. That is satsang. You say, I want to leave. Before, I was making the mistake of always asking, please, can you stop these people from molesting me? Can you stop this thing from coming to me? Can you stop me from feeling like this? And so on. So now, today, you say, can you stop me? <laughs> oh, it's good, it's good. What knows me? What knows the me? Is it the me? What knows the me feeling? If I ask this question, where does it take you? Is it? If even everyone knows the sense of you, yeah, you know you. So we ask you, how are you? How is this person? You know, I know about this one. Okay, what about you? What do you know about you? Can this you be known? You you tell all these things. Your biography you can write. Is the biography you? You can tear it up, throw it away. You have to find when you say I, the highest significance of it, not just as a concept, but as direct experience. When you say I, you must prove is I a thing? Is it an object? Is it something tangible or intangible? Is it visible or invisible? You must prove that. And today is a fine day, I don't know. But I'm not just here to prove it to you. You must be ready for it.
You came fine. You say now I want to leave even the one who wants, wants, wants. Even this, if this one who wants something, even good things, was not there, then what is left? If the one who wants itself vanished, then what is left then? The one who wants even good things and don't want bad things. Hmm? If that one is not, then what is there left? Could anybody answer from a real experience and not from theory? If you come to know that the one who wants, who have desire itself, if you come to see that it is only an itself an idea, believed in, believed in intensely, if you come to see it, that it is only an idea, but you see this, you don't see it as an idea now. And then something is going to change right here today. <clears throat> if you know what an idea is, that is only also a cloud passing. But you say clouds pass and they don't come back. But I keep being me every day. I wake up, I'm still me. Does this me? Is this me? Um, what can I say? Is it stable? Is the me sense the I person? Is it stable? Then how can I relate to this? As do I can give something which is unstable uh, a direction? And say it can follow it. It's not stable, it can't follow things. It believes it follows things. If I ask you, is the feeling of I in you as a person, is it stable? And your answer is what? No. no. What knows it's not stable? Is, is it the I that knows I am not stable? Or is there something deeper that is observed? This I thing is not stable. You must prove this. I, listen, I am not going to hear, I am not talking lecture to you. This is an interactive satsang, okay? Over, over the last month, I heard you many times mm -hmm. um, invite us to check like, where. Where are you speaking from when you say I? Mm -hmm. And uh, during the the intensive in Lisbon, it um, uh, just came almost. I was questioning everything, and um, it was a very intense few days, giving me headache even. But it led me to realize that actually my whole life, what I was saying I is is actually in front of something else. <laughs> it's made of assessment and wanting, not wanting. And I just couldn't say, after doing Lisbon, then I just couldn't say, I. I just, you know, I don't know, I think the change just happened. I said, it. You know, just it, it is good. It is moving. And when he <laughs> says, I cannot say I now, and feel comfortable, because every time now he says I, he says, oh, and we have to check which one is talking. Yeah. 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 <laughs> is this good? If you, if a, if a psychotherapist heard you like that, they say, oh, I think you need to come to the office straight away. Hmm? But for me, I say, but this is very good. This is very good. Hmm? Everyone wants to to solve other, but you are finding this. What is this I when I speak? What, what what is being represented by I? You go. I said sometime you go to a restaurant, any restaurant, and keep quiet. Just go and take an orange juice or coffee and listen to conversation because there's always conversations in restaurants. Okay, 
Listen, how many people say, I did this and you did this, but I believe this. Do you think about that? How many times you hear I or me? And what is it referring to? Is it personal or is it consciousness? You see? Then you listen. Then you may have an idea of when you say I, what you're referring to. And the one who is intelligent will say, Wait a second. But all of my life, I'm only referring to my person, which is only a set of habits and conditioning and patterns. How can they be consistent? And something is aware of it. That which is aware of it is stimulated into recognition at the moment. Whoa, but a deeper seeing recognizes that. So now when you say, I, just, oh, yeah, I didn't like that. Something stops and checks in and say, which eye is this? Uh-huh. You don't tell anybody this because it sounds very funny. But you yourself are looking you know, and say, whoa. Again, it's a reference from my mind. It's just my mind. Hmm? Then and who is troubled by it? Who is troubled by it? <laughs> this is, it's a very intimate feeling, like I am troubled by it. But this I is what? How much more space is left for an I now? The rest of the I can only be the weakness or God. Who else can take I here? Or the devil, the devil also I can give. Because God says, I am. But the devil also say, I am. And ego says, I am. Hmm? And the weakness also say, I am. Are they all the same thing? No, you have to look like that. And I tell you, if you are looking like this in a short time, you are going to make the greatest discovery possible for a human being. And this discovery will not be outside of you. Because this I is a shape-shifter, but it can only shift in a few places. I, person, hmm? which is I ego, or I weakness of the person, or you know, like this, or I the devil, which is uh, very unlikely, but is there also, or I God, or you may say I as pure consciousness, but this one doesn't speak very much, and God is not speaking very much. The devil speaks quite a lot, but uh, he uses you also. <laughs> and there's the I person and the I witness. I witness is more quiet than the I person. Is it helpful? Can you relate to what I'm speaking? Yes. Because we can change subject a little bit. But it's going to be the same subject. But, uh... <laughs> mm-hmm. So, this what I call the I watching. Eye watching and eye washing is the same thing. <laughs> when you say I, what is it in re- reference to? You see, is it just personal? And if it's personal, is it reliable? Is it stable? Is it healthy? And then you say, No, it's not. I said that which knows it's not, okay, must be the weakness of I. If this weakness also weaknesses, but don't interfere, don't identify. What is your environment at the moment, you see? And you look. These are my questions. Anyone who is earnest, whose time somehow has come for that, this one is going to wake up. Is going to wake up. Everybody is waking up, a different stage of waking up. What is a question the one who wakes up will ask? Could I still be awake? Could I still be sleeping? You see? This question is going to burn every question, you see. But it's not for everybody at the same time. Um, and when it's when interacting with people that mm-hmm. it's 
it's very easy to that I slip back mm -hmm. in identification. So because this is all fairly new, I have faith that you know maybe. Yeah. Let me give you. Them. I'm going to say something now in response to you, but when, everybody can benefit from it now. This thing, yeah. But I don't know if I can uh, uh, speak it. <laughs> in the beginning, we are mostly reporting about the object of perception. Hmm? In the beginning, we are used to um, observing and discussing and becoming involved with the object of perception, something external, what's going on in the world, what somebody says to me, or what's, we report about this. It is one of the main topics, uh, what, what we see, what we think, what we believe, this kind of thing. No? So a very externalized attention. But as soon as you begin to learn, to observe, to pay attention, and to observe with detachment, hmm, and not get too involved in things, gradually what tends to happen is at a certain point, you become aware of the environment of the observer. Outside, many. But the, the seeing place is one. But nobody looks at the seeing place. When you begin to observe without getting involved, the attention moves back and you become aware of the environment of the seeing. And immediately you experience a field like cocooned in a sort of spaciousness and peace and the quietness is there. And you immediately are attracted to it. It makes you feel content and happy and spacious like that. And uh, the, the, the fascination with external perception is begin to <coughs> shrink. It begins to turn inward and begins to enjoy the inner seeing. Your field of view becomes panoramic. You are able to see things in a very wide way, but you are not easily pulled into anything specifically, and you are not bound by anything. Because the more you become aware of yourself as the weakness, hmm? and if I say, can the weakness be itself weaknessed, then the, all the energy that was going outward turn inwardly and conserves its power. To find out, can that which sees, can that be seen also? And these are not question and answer. It's more question and revelation. Questions and recognition. Question and confirmation and experience. You become aware of yourself. But is this self an object? Then you begin to experience that no objects seem external. This one feels internal. And then I ask you that which is able to perceive external and internal is where placed? And I said, don't give it to your mind. And now you come to the infinite one. And when you feel the infinite, you know automatically nothing can stand outside of the infinite to look at the infinite. Only the infinite can perceive the infinite. But there are some forces still alive and functioning within us, that is directly in resistance to this type of discovery. He wants to keep you just worried about your body and circumstances, and what your neighbour said, and your relationship, and so on. And something is fiercely protecting and defending that limited life. 
And you may find, you know, actually, some people have, they find that no, they are too attached to their projections to come to where I am speaking. Some of them will turn against you because they have to protect their projections and their identity. And so they are living in the realm of Maya. For the moment, they are lost. Two days ago, I had one email from one of one uh, of my students. She was from uh, the, the uh, Oshoji, and uh, she sent one thing. She was reminding me that uh, something was said of this this era of time of the manifest world we call Kali Yuga. Uh, that this master and others have said, perhaps. In this time, there, there are not going to be many other generations that will wake up. Too much conditioning with the, in the body, the body mind, the, the urge to wake up to what we call waking up, maybe is getting weak. I don't fully accept it. But all I can say, don't waste your chance. I am not somebody to go around beating drums about these things. But always, when you are close to the goal, the strongest destructions are coming. When you are close to discovering, or sometimes just after a profound insight, a lot of disturbing ideas come for you. Can you hold your ground? Or is your desire for freedom something just frivolous and imaginary? Is it some spiritual fantasy? But I know you, and I know that many of you, you are already in this process and in the stage of waking up to the fullness. And uh, the forces of uh, deviation or distractions have tried you, but you have not failed. A little bit failing here, small, small little, small little stumbles here and there, but you are still here, so uh, I am still with you. <laughs> And uh, don't feel sorry for yourself, because you have to be tested. But remember, you are not tested to fail. You are tested to transcend. Because without being tested, you don't, you don't find the energy to, to really the resolve to grow. Also. When you are in an environment that is spiritually uh, mature, then you get a lot of encouragement, because you see beings, you other beings like you, other people like yourself, who are evolving and are shining in wisdom and light. So they help. So, whoa, but I'm, I have to reach that. It's, it's possible. Otherwise, what happened? Uh, the devil tell you, look, oh, where is he awake? Where is anybody awake? <laughs> you know? And you think, yeah, yeah, there is anybody. You know? Because you are always waiting for someone else to be awake. Why not you set the example? I think if I hadn't met you, I would probably still be in doubt. And this is by far the greatest gift mm. of your presence. Ah, very good. Mm. That which sees, which perceives, 
By perceiving, I mean thoughts and feelings, dreams, actualities, that can discern that which is behind all of that. Can that itself be perceived? Is it a phenomenon? Is it an object of perception? Because if it is itself an object of perception, what is it that perceives that? Then? Can it be other than the truth of you? Maybe our mind is waiting for an answer. And something knows well, but you know, but mind itself is phenomenal. That which knows mind itself is phenomenal. Is that itself phenomenal? May I ask questions like that also? I, I also noticed this that wanting answers is, you know, lingers. Very good. When I come out of the state of mind, because in this state of mind and person, there's questions and answers, and it works for a while. But then when I get out of this state, I see it lingers, this desire to find answers. And it's really when I, it's usually when this drops that I, I realize, oh, okay. That was, that was keeping me tied to the world of the mind. Mm. Uh, you you being what? Well, <laughs> you know, you, you, you often say it's, an, it's only after you come out of a state that you realize. So no. usually when I'm in this state, I'm saying, you know, I, I want answer, I want, and, and, and then usually I take it as a clue that I'm still identified if I still see my life in terms of uh, problems and solutions yeah. and questions and answers. And then I and it does feel even inside this, it's odd. There's something a bit strange. It doesn't, it works a little bit, but, and it's really when I, yeah, as I said, it's kind of a, usually it helps me because it's true. So once I get, one, once I slip back into identification, it's almost as if I, I can, I can see what I was seeing maybe 10 Where minutes you before. You, you are in identification or out of it? It's much better now. So this now moment, did you create? Yeah. Hmm. Now this is called, you know, auspicious attention. No, when you are aware that uh, you know. Uh, Yes, something gets pulled into that space, and then when, when it gets pulled in, belief is there also. All the momentum of previous habits is there, and there arises a conviction: this is happening to me. But there is still the possibility of seeing. But but oh wait a second! All of that, not just ninety percent, the whole of it is a, is an is an illusion. <laughs> And then who is left then? Unfinished business left? Hmm? Those of you who have just come, is this all too much for you? No. Is that all fifty voices I've heard there just now? <laughs> I'm counting. Hmm? This is the kind of things that we talk about here. And even if it feels a little bit, whoa, you know, whoa, I, I can't get my head around, it's okay. It's okay. If somewhere in you knows, I need to be here. Even if you don't speak my language, something tells you, I, I don't understand everything, or don't understand hardly anything, but I need to be here. Then this thing will feed you, it's taking care of you.
So as I said at the beginning, uh, <coughs> I mean, I wanted to ask if I could come to you. Mm. It doesn't feel so relevant right now, but mm. can I come to you? <laughs> if there's some distance, yes. Sit with that. Hmm? Thank you. Okay. But Hi, Guruji. Hi, darling. Um, so while I was away um, from here. I was listening to a satsang you had here in the Mandir and you said something that really went very deeply here into my heart and it was that you put yourself in the position of I and God as other, as you. And this was heard very profoundly and from that... Um, it, it's seen that you're, you are here as I and that this is what is here. Uh, um, I got it. Sorry, my legs are shaking. <laughs> and since then, there was something I, w I could see that there was something that wanted to work out what was happening, and try, as always. Yeah. And yeah. I just uh, left it. D dismiss him. Exactly, yes. He's of no good. He was seen straight away mm. that you can't know, and mm. it was just left, like yeah. you just said exactly. Very good. And, um, mm. and just to let whatever's going to unfold now unfold. Yes. And 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 that's it. And including whatever meaning it wants to feel. Mm -hmm. Don't go picking around. You know what does this mean? And just picking up the mind again. Just uh, surrender everything in that moment. You know, because God has picked you up. And then don't look after yourself. Mm. Yes. You see. Mind want to say, yeah. So no, what does that mean now? You know, uh, and uh, you know, no. Uh, you leave him. Don't go him to him. Like this, you are totally, totally uh, available for this, for all of this, for all of this. But don't try to work anything out. Mm? When God picks you up, don't try to work anything out. You see, I once watched a, uh, uh, one in one in one <laughs> in one movie. Okay, one movie. I don't watch movie very much, but I'm going back a few years, and uh, it was one of these uh, mafia guys, real bad guys, you know. And uh, he was talking with other mafia bad guys, and uh, one one guy that they, they, that was about to get into big trouble with them. Uh, offered up something. He said, "Yes, but what I uh, I feel that this and this and this is happening," and he slapped him. The other one slapped him. He said, "Listen, when I want you to have an opinion, I'll give you one." <laughs> <laughs> and that's very very rude, isn't it? I mean, like, I mean that. I mean, so that stood up, you know. So now, uh, God is telling you, when I want you to have an opinion, I give you one. <laughs> That would be beautiful, <laughs> because all the time you're living with your opinion, mind opinion. And now the supreme has picked you up. He said, "No, you know, don't worry about, it. don't work anything out. 
the working thing. If you truly surrender, means let go, and I'll take care of you. The Lord is saying, I'll take care of you. You see, mm. there are different kind of uh, relationships in uh, we call like in uh, like in Bhakti Yoga. Uh, some things, some examples I can give you. The relationship between uh, like a devotee and 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 God. No, he says for some, sometimes uh, uh, if the devotee is devotee is like a, like a like a kitten, like a, a a little baby cat, and the mother just come, it wants to and just picks it up by the back of the neck and carries it around the place and puts it down, and it just hangs in. Go there. It doesn't decide where I want to go. You know, put him there. Okay. There are some devotees that they're like that. God just picks them up and they don't know where they're going. Hanging and put them in this place, and then they're very happy. They just go walk about and stuff like that. You know, that's a very very big devotion. Another one is like uh, like monkey, baby monkey. Uh, mother wants to take you over to there. But you always just got to hold on. You have to hold on to Mama, and Mama goes jumping around the trees. And then you learn something, and then you. But you have to hold on. The devotee have to hold on. That's also one kind of relationship, also. And then one is like a baby kangaroo. It lives inside mother's belly, and you just get to look always, boom, 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 not bouncing, but bounce around. Then you come. And this is one kind. And then one is like a baby bird. Mommy is bringing you worms every day. Then one day you look out, no worms come, look and kick you out. Yeah? Say, ah, oh, and then you're off like this. So what kind of what kind of baby you are? I don't know. Sometimes we're all of them. Sometimes we're all of them. In, in that way, if you have that type of temperament, you see. So you are learning also by this way, God is imparting wisdom inside you also. Because you see, yes, you know, the one, the tempter come and say, yeah, yeah, but what about this traffic? He goes, no, no, I'm already in good hands. I'm already in good hands. You see? If He wants me to know something, you will plant that knowledge inside my heart and my mind, and that is trust. You see, that's one way. Then, if it wants that somehow uh, you are beyond the stage of being carried or bounced or whatever like this, no, and then you it'll show you another way. Maybe something is more refined to really follow, you know, the ways of the. You know, of introspection and to look and, and to go beyond everything. Somehow go beyond everything. Everything that has a shape, hmm? you can touch, you can play, but you stay shapeless. This is another way. Every shape you can touch, every concept is a shape, every object is a shape, every relationship, every idea is a shape. We tell you, don't become any shape. You stay shapeless, and who hears this? Yes, and and feels the feels the beauty of it. Yeah, hmm? and you see something. You talk to somebody. And you say oh, it's okay. Sometimes somebody say I'm fine until I start to talk with people, and then I get pulled into shape. When will you speak with people? And you don't get pulled into shape. So the more you look and you, you keep observing and seeing, but wait a second, yes, yes, that, that is understood. But you don't leave the place of your seeing. It's like you are all everything is happening in the place of your seeing. You see? So nothing pulls you into shape. You see? Then you can speak with anyone, even the devil, and he cannot pull you into shape. Then you can confirm your that infiniteness it doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to anybody. Hmm? It is the one that is. When you say that alone exists, yeah, we are that. 
and it has the dance of individuality, it's fine. It doesn't find conflict with individual expression. Every petal on this flower is unique. It doesn't have to make things all look the same. Yeah? The essence is the essence, untroubled, in every expression is there. When we don't understand, you try to make things look the same, like that makes them the same. They don't make them the same. The, the, that which is one is not trying to be many. It dreams many, it plays many, and yet it is always one. So in a sense, in this, in this journey of life, we are like the recovering consciousness. It's like you are becoming yourself. A strange thing to say. People say, well, I am myself. I say, no, you are not. <laughs> not yet. You see, sometimes I say, there is nothing you need to do to be what you are. But there is something you need to discover in order to stop being what you are not. Again, there is nothing you need to do to be what you truly are. But there is something we need to discover in order to stop being what we are not. Because we keep thinking you are this person and you are that and this and this, and, that. and all these things that we touch, we go into the shape of them, cause trouble. When you are clear as to your true identity, and something is washing your face, washing your eyes, Washing the mind, so that you are not confused anymore. Then you will see the world as it really can be seen, as the very body of God. We won't want to own it, or to abuse it, any more than you want to abuse your body. If somebody abuses their body, it means that they are not in harmony, not happy. You want to take care of it. Even if something appears to be like a little bit of conflict, but still it is inside the greater harmony. Like sometime by accident, you know, whatever I was reading something of Papaji saying, you know, said that, you know, if your if your teeth bite your tongue, your tongue cannot be unhappy about it. Because it tends to do that when the food is too nice. You're eating too fast. <laughs> You don't go and punch your teeth out because of biting your tongue. You say, okay, okay, maybe I'm eating too much or something. You know? A smart person thinks like that. You know, maybe eating too much. You know? I speak from experience. You know? <laughs> so just like that is what I feel when I hear you like that. I feel so much space. Yes. And it, and it also feels that how beautiful this insight is and all the fruits that come from it, this joy, this love and such gratitude to you, it still seems like it's a happening in yes. the non-happening ah. that you talk about so often. Yes, these days I'm talking like this because I feel it is an excellent example, because I say everything, because what do we talk about? Happenings. Whatever we talk about is something that we feel has happened, you know, or what we want to happen, or what used to happen, or you know, what we have planned to happen, or what we think is happening. You know? And I say we put so much importance on this, but what I have observed is that a happening is a kind of a mental uh, deduction. You know, you say this thing happened, you know? because we can say like, you know, if I say what's happening in here, and I can point it. To someone, what's happening at the moment? And they could say, I can't talk about it, it's just so many things are happening right now. My mind is in a tsunami and it's just like, whoa, thousands of things happening. And the person next to you will say, What about you? What's happening? And they say, Nothing. And who is right? Well, experientially, both are right. Hmm? What's happening? What constitutes a happening? If the mind says, this thing is happening, 
then it's kind of recorded, or it leaves an impression something happens. So I was pointing out that every happening is a movement of time and change and context. And every happening is like a blip in the immensity of the non-happening. Can anybody relate to this one? Yes. It says, "Do you know something?" And we make such a fuss about um, something which is just also we perceive out of habit, and then we want to break someone's neck because of it, and we want to do all these things, and uh, and so many other things we ignore, also. So I said, "This thing happening, and it's gone." But memory make it lingers as though it's got a further life, but in actuality, that happening may just be, you know, a few seconds, and yet you live all your life with it. But something uh, just becoming aware of the the space of the non-happening, did the non-happening suffer a happening? You see, and in this non-happening. You know, is it personal? These are questions that, if you spend time with me, I'll keep asking you. You see, and something inside maybe feel a bit confronted, but you have to go a bit deeper and to look. And what's happening? You're waking up to yourself. You're waking up to what is true. You're not constructing, not creating, just discovering. That is all. And that is what is so beautiful. Then you see that all this that you are discovering was already. What you are. It's already what you are. Somebody said also in Satsang, you know, I'm ready, Guruji, I'm ready now. I said, You are ready to become what you are already. Yeah? You are just being ready to become what you are already. But we don't know. You see, this is it. Hmm. Thank you. And I just want to say that I just leave my head at your feet always. Hmm. See, many people don't know what you mean when you say that, and they get me into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. Hmm. You know what it means. If you experience some turbulence, some sense of burning and things like this, I want to tell you ahead of time, see it as a very good sign, a sign of a process of purification is happening. And sometimes it's much, much better than sadhana. Sadhana means spiritual practice, and you're sitting and yes, should I do this? And no, it's burning. Uh, surrender to it and just say, you know, leave nothing unburnt. Because nothing can burn what is true, only what is untrue. You see? Have this much courage, because sometimes it will feel like it's a risk, and oh my God, you know, I don't know what's happening to me, I'm falling apart. Everybody has to fall apart. To discover your harmony, because presently you think you are all together, but you're, we're a mess. <laughs> so sometimes the mess has to split open somehow, has to crack open, and feel the full blast, the sunlight from God's kiss, and then somehow, oh, uh, some miracle happened in you. So whatever happens by yourself, just have this attitude. Thank you, even if it feels like oh, oh my God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and mean it also. 
that you can't can be inside her head. No, we mean it. At first it feels like, but I, some people say, but I don't know what to say thank you to anything for. I have nothing in my life to be thankful for. They especially should say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And gradually, the, the vibration, it so cleans your field, it cleans your house, cleans your aura, cleans your consciousness from all the dirt from the mind and from the person, that eventually you probably start to see so many things to say thank you for even. Hmm? Just thank you, thank you, clean, become totally empty, 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 empty. It's a paradox that we spend so much of life tasting everything, doing everything, only to discover the emptiness is above everything. A foolish person getting as much, 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 we are, you know, constipated with things. So for, for such person, uh, the truth or discovering truth may at first feel more like laxative than it is some of, you know, building up, but this is good. We come to a place where you are empty, but you are complete, something feels complete. You find that. Uh, you can respond, something responds to life without, without strategies also, without manipulation. It's just why, why it happened. Because you are one with life. When we are practicing to be one with life, you are separated from life. When you discover the truth or you have a love for God, you are harmony with life again. All I'm sharing here. I hope that it will be proven in you. Many of you know what we are speaking about to be true. It is just a way of the, of the Self. It is not something we have to study a lot of books about. Hmm? Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, so, a big part of satsang today was to welcome all of you who came in uh, yesterday, say, uh, good that you came, and uh, uh, hope that you get the full benefit of and the possibility of being being here. And uh, and uh, I'm looking at the faces that I can see who uh, feels fresh and new, but you know what? Everybody feel like the self to me. <laughs> so there is no. The difference in that way, that is. Okay, thank you for today. I think we are good. You know, mm. now from from time to time, maybe somebody's going to play some music. And they can start to come. From time to time, uh, when it feels good, I will call for a satsang. Okay? And so you may not get two days' notice or something like that. You'll just get two days' notice. Okay, or something like that. So, okay, we're meeting at two o'clock and it will happen like that. It's good with you? Yes. Okay, it's very nice. And this thing, I had, uh, I had some letters. This was, from, <laughs> this was from Lisbon. I didn't get to read all the letters. I told everybody I will read it when I go back to Saja. I haven't done it. I tell so many lies like that. <laughs> so I promise I'll read, you know, and already it's I don't know when it was now. <laughs> but it's not so many and we'll find some time if you we do that. Ah. Thank you.
came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song awoke from angels bending near the earth to touch their hearts of gold. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song awoke from angels bending. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats over all the weary world. Peace, honor, good. Circling years shall come the time foretold when the new heaven and earth shall own the Prince of Peace, their King, and the whole world sending back the song which now the angels sing. Good will to my